lift off in three, two, one. Hey, 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 writing cadets. Welcome back to Moving Right Along, the podcast by young writers for young writers. We're your hosts, Ray, Kat, and Ruby. And for today's topic, we are going to be discussing screenplays. What are they? How do you write them? And why they're not as straightforward as they may seem. And my co-hosts are pumping their fists. Let's just say they are very, very excited. <laughs> I'm so ready. Okay, so first of all, what are screenplays and if you've ever watched a movie or a tv show or anything of the sort the screenplay is essentially like the blueprint that it follows it includes the dialogue the screen directions and the instructions for the actors to follow and this is what the director is going to use to make the movie or the tv show so today we'll be discussing how to get started writing a screenplay what the differences are between writing a novel and writing a screenplay and why you should give it a go Yes, and as I, I am the newbie here. I've have I've never written a screenplay. Um, I will be sitting still and looking pretty. That's my job today. Um, but because I don't really know anything, uh, we figured a fun way to do this episode is that I kind of interview my fellow co-hosts and gain their knowledge and learn alongside our listeners today. So I'm very excited. Yeah. Not gonna lie, when you said gain our knowledge, that sounded a bit like you're gonna steal it from our brains. <laughs> like, gain <laughs> that, that's knowledge. That's what I'm gonna do. You said you gain guys are gonna our forget knowledge. how to write. You guys are gonna forget <laughs> how to write screenplays by the time this is over. Okay, and I will I'm... know everything. That's a bit terrifying. Um, but to it's warm okay. up, we thought we'd do a little game with Ruby. So we're gonna be t- um, asking Ruby to give us a definition of a couple of like screenwriting terms. And what she thinks that they might meet, they might mean. And if she gets them right, Simone will say, "I'm very proud of Ruby." <laughs> that is that is Ruby's prize. <laughs> and, and if she doesn't get them right, um, I'm afraid it's into the pits with, with her. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, Guys, I'm it's a very, it's, yeah, it's very high stakes. This. Okay, so our first question is: What do you think? Int int and EXT stand for or like a short for or what what do you think they mean in screenwriting? That's a really good question. <laughs> um well <laughs> int I immediately think introduction. So I'm gonna go introduction something to do with beginning. Um the other one was EXT? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Extraduction. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I mean, okay, I'm gonna guess exit. Maybe it's introduction and exit, and like it's intro and end, end, beginning and end. So I'll give you a hint if you want a hint. It's to do with um what you yeah. write when you're trying to set the scene. So at the beginning when you're setting a scene. Introduction. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Never mind. I'll just tell you what it is. So, <laughs> in screenwriting, you always have to tell, basically, the the director whether your scene takes place inside or outside, right? So, interior or exterior, right? So, that's what they stand uh... for. Because, if you think about it, when you're making, like, a film or stuff, they need to know if this, like, shot is no. going to be, like, need to be inside or if it's going to be, need to be shot outside. So, that's why... It's INT sounds for interior, EXT sounds for exterior. Yeah. Oh, okay, <laughs> that it. makes sense. Yeah, yeah I yeah. need that. You know, what? I think I think I was close. Introduction and extraduction, interior, yeah. exterior, <laughs> same thing. Extraduction's not a word, but you know, I like it. I you know what? It. I'm, I'm just gonna be creative. Thank yeah. you. I know. You know, I paved my own road. <laughs> yeah. Say, we uh, give me those points. Got him. Yeah. Good job, me. Next one. Oh, okay. So our next one is: What do you think a spec script is? So S P E C script. Spec. Spec. Those are either there's glasses. Those are specs. <laughs> there's also specters, which are ghosts. Um. I'm gonna look for like the Latin root, but I'm really not getting anything. Uh, probably like the earliest version of a script. That would be my best guess. Some, wh- oh, you're close. You're kind. You're oh! kind of close. Not. Good job. It's, it's, 
it's sort of it's the earliest version of the script that gets sent out so basically this is a script that a writer will send to like studios and basically the one that they'll be using to pitch with so this is before they add things like screen right. directions so yeah you were close you're close you get one I got it right back. i think i got let's it right give, yeah right ruby a round of applause oh. right right you're not joining in on the round of applause i'm, I'm sorry i'm zoning out <laughs> Too. I'm applauding for myself as well. I'm so proud. Um, okay, so our last yeah. one is: What do you think a slug line is? Slug. <laughs> so, yeah, um, slug line. The li- like the little. Are they insects? Are they snails? I don't know. Um, I'm not asking you what a slug is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what a slug is. It's just how does that relate to a line? Uh, um. Hmm. I'm gonna say, like, like, um, like a, like a, uh, like a division in a script, like, like a slug line. Wait, wait, wait. Is it like a line where, like, there's like the like the dotted line that like separates scenes? Or okay, you're shaking your you, head. You're so kind of close. With, no. You're kind of close with <laughs> like separating a little bit, but it's separate. basically it separates. No, it does. It doesn't separate. But I was trying to give you like I was trying to give you something. But um, so basically, it is the first line of a scene which will describe the location. So this is like like time and location. So this is where you have the int. So you'll have like something like int dot like day. Like a no, no it's not like a place like the kitchen day basically so that's what a slug line is so yeah that was our quiz I Ruby kind of got a half point for that so hey you... I think I I think I got really close Simone got... are you proud of me pretty good <laughs> I'm so proud of you Ruby <gasps> oh my god <laughs> yeah. this is special we're all oh, so proud Simone. of you Ruby. thank you Simone Okay, well, yeah, that's the end of our game, which now transitions us into the actual, like, meat of the episode. Ew, I'm not going to describe it as meat. That's weird. Meat. Okay, the actual, delicious. actually, what we're going to be talking about. <laughs> delicious. Um, So I have some <laughs> questions for you guys about screenwriting, because I literally know nothing. Um, <laughs> to start us off, I wanted to ask what got each of you interested in screenwriting? Um, so I am a very visual person, uh, when I'm reading, like, I have a tendency to sort of see it in my mind, like, if I'm reading or if I'm writing something, like, it's almost like I'm watching it play out in my mind, so when I sort of figured out the fact that, hey, you can do that, but with screenwriting and sort of make a movie that you can see in your head, I was like, oh my god, sign me up, um, so I really like the fact that I can take that visual and write it into something that's going to give a visual for everybody else if that makes sense and i just think it's so neat and cool (laughs) so um i just like trying out different like types of writing all the time i think it's a really good way to improve your skill generally in writing to to try out different styles and mediums because they each have like different limitations and they can teach you different things about writing and there's certain like stories I think are just better told as like movies because it's just it's just like the cinematic potential especially like if you want a montage scene like sometimes I just have like the little idea of like a montage scene and I'm like oh this would look so good and like a little like film and you see it like cut to all these like different cool things and it's just yeah so um I start I think I started writing screenwriting during the pandemic, which was 2020. I was going to say last year, but it's been a whole year <laughs> since then. So I started writing, um, I wrote my first screenplay during then. And also screenwriting is a lot faster. So I managed to write a few. I think I, I wrote like two movies and a couple of TV pilots and stuff like that. And it was just lots of fun. So now every so often after I finish a book, I'm like, let me go write a screen play for this but also i tried for a movie adaptation of one of my books which would not recommend it makes you <laughs> not it's not fun because <laughs> like you have to cut out stuff yourself because it's just kind of like you can't yeah it, we'll get on to that later though but mm-hmm. yeah, that's that's what got me interested in screenwriting that i didn't really answer the question yet i was just interested i just wanted to do it um i like movies <laughs> movies are fun and writing dialogue is fun so yeah that yeah. is my answer I love dialogue 
movies are fun i love that idea of like how you would think about the story and it only like made sense as a movie because that can happen to me when writing like books i'm like this would look so good this way in a movie but there's no (laughs) way that i could describe it in the book like montage scenes you can't put that in a book but sometimes i really want to so i want to find a way um so if there's anybody listening who maybe wants to start transitioning from a more traditional like novel or short story style of writing into screenplays uh what do you think are the main differences that they need to know about Um, I think that the main difference would be that there's so much more to it than just the words on the page. Like, when you have a novel, it's kind of just you writing your book. But with, um, with screenplays, it's more collaborative. There's so many things that you have to think about. And, uh, you know, like, there's what the actors are going to contribute to your characters in the scenes. There's the lighting, the color palettes, the camera angles. And it, it literally goes right down to, like, the weather in a scene. Um, like... In rom-coms, in the dramatic scenes, it's always raining. Like, if you look at any rom-com and it's a scene where, like, they get in a fight and the girl, like, runs away and he goes after the girl and blah, blah, blah. You know, all that. You don't want to talk about Ruby. <laughs> um, it's, it's raining because it's conveying the mood and the emotion to the audience. And with screenplays, a lot of it is like that. It's not just you writing your story. It's you thinking about everything that's going into the story. It's thinking about the people in the future that are going to work with you on this to bring it to life. And it's thinking about what they might be able to contribute to Oh my god, contribute to it. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's working with people you don't know yet and working with something that's very sort of vague yeah. in a way, but still descriptive, and it's a very fine line to walk, and it takes a lot of practice to get it right, but once you do get it right, it can be so much fun to write. So I highly suggest it. That's the theme for this episode. Go write screenplays. <laughs> <laughs> That's the message. Yeah, I love that. Um, I definitely agree with what you said. Um, I'm going to give some more like pragmatic, like <laughs> boring, boring differences <laughs> basically between um, novels and screenplays. So first of all, um, screenplays are a lot shorter than novels are. For example, with a movie, it's generally going to be up to 120 pages long compared to a novel, which might be like 400 or 500 pages. And even in those 120 pages, you've got to remember that the formatting is so, so different in, in, in comparison to a novel where it's all like densely written like that. It's going to be spread out. So those 120 pages are like so, there's ba- basically barely any words on the page there. And a TV show pilot will be even less. It'll be up to like 60 pages long. Um, the other big thing is that most of the time you're not going to have um, characters in a thoughts the same way that you do in a novel because generally unless you have narration you're just not you're not going to have that so um for example actually no I'm going to say that because we'll save it for the book adaptation a bit later <laughs> skipping that I'm not saying those words um <laughs> and the other thing is just like what Ray said is that um it's a collaborative effort effort Um, One of the big things is that people often forget about writing a screenplay is that the audience are never going to see the script. Unlike with a book, which is just like the final product, that's what you give to the readers. The audience aren't going to see the script. They're only going to see the final product, which is like a movie or a TV show. So you kind of have to let certain things like go because at the end of the day, you're not going to be able to decide everything you're going to have like a director you're going to have the actors who are going to be putting their own spin on things and like that can make it like this really beautiful collaborative effort but you just have to like keep that in mind that the audience are going to be seeing your script doesn't mean it's not important which I want I want to get onto you a bit later but it's just it's just very very different in that the script is kind of the blueprint is the building blocks but it is not like the final product so yeah those are my thoughts on the biggest differences (laughs) That's so... I never had really considered that the screenplay is kind of just, like, the base for, like, a movie or a TV show, and then a bunch of different people take their own creative spins on that screenplay. That's... I love that. That's so cool, actually. Um, But because a screenplay, you know, it isn't ever shown to the public, and it also is a very collaborative effort, uh, do you think that makes it easier to write, or do you think that ever makes the writing, like, end up being less complex? Um, I don't think so, because while you don't have to sort of have everything down to specifically what it's going to be in the final product, you do have to um, sort of compensate for the exactness of a novel with the formatting. Screenplays have their own specific formatting, which we'll probably talk about later, but it's really complicated. It's like my worst enemy sometimes, but... um, And it's also, like we said, it's the blueprint. So if 
the blueprint's not good, the people who are going to add to it later aren't, A, going to be interested in adding to it, and B, probably won't have something good enough to work off of. So you still have to sort of hone in on the screenplay, but it's... It's more baseline of writing than how exact a novel is. Um, my simple answer to your question is no. <laughs> it is not <laughs> easy to write. <laughs> um, it's like, as someone who's written both, it's very, very different. It, it, there's definitely similarities in the skills, but it's very, very different skills because something that you get in novels that you don't get in um, screenplays is in screenplays there is no room to kind of just go off and do your own thing so with like a novel you could have if you want like in lord of the rings you can have like a 10 pages about like the name of a tree but in a screenplay because it's so much shorter you have to be a lot more exact and precise with your words because at the end of the day you are giving this to a director to read and they are deciding like is this like what what these few words that you have on the page how can that inform my decisions on how i direct this um something that i think i read somewhere i might be lying to you is like called directing on the page so what that is is when you write your screenplay in such a way that the, you're like kind of pushing the director to make certain decisions just by like writing the thing so even though you might not have said explicitly that you want this to be directed this way because of how you've written it the director's like oh i'm gonna direct it this way and it's like you're just playing like mind tricks on them and stuff like that so yeah and also i know they everyone knows that like if you've ever watched a movie or a tv show with bad writing you, it doesn't matter how good the actors are it like riverdale they they've got good actors but they're writing in it that's terrible that yeah, is absolutely terrible. terrible so like you can see right there that is how important screenwriting is like the screenplay is to the final product because at the end of the day it is the basis of like the house and if your house don't got good foundations then the house is coming down yeah Ooh, that is a stuff. really good analogy well, metaphor yeah. for y'all <laughs> metaphors yeah, yeah. <laughs> i want to be in the riverdale writers room and just see how it happens because i don't know who's like green lighting some of the stuff that happens on that show i don't know who's like hears about it and is like wow this is perfect let's do it <laughs> like I don't know I just I'm just so curious um but let's say like well actually let's just use me as me as the example because maybe I should try this out um so where do you think I should start with writing a screenplay where would you say here's where you start here's like the first step um I would say the formatting because as I mentioned before it is very very complicated sometimes um you can use free websites like I don't know how to pronounce this, but uh, Caltex, Caltex, uh, Writers Two so. Studio Binder. I use Studio Binder. It's pretty good. Uh, the only problem oh, is you can God. only have one project at a time, which is kind of oh annoying. oh. Listen, oh, listen, oh. right? I've got I've got a tip for you. So I okay. use Writers Do It, and what you can do is you can like archive projects in there. So technically, you're only allowed to have three at a time, but mm -hmm. you can like archive projects and then like come back to them later. So that's what I do. Ooh. I've found a way around. Oh, you because, you are a savior. Yeah, I love you. yeah. Okay. That, is, that is why. I do. Or I just use like all the different websites because that would work them too. Have limits. All the different websites to get yeah. like all the different. Um, yeah. So that's that's like my little tip to um, you. Anyway, but yeah, carry on. <laughs> with those websites they basically format them for you um there's also templates on google docs or word um but personally i think it would be better if you really considering writing a screenplay like seriously i would say just learn what the format is because it would really help you in the long run understanding why this is here why this is indented what what's going on here and here because i didn't i did not learn what the formatting was in the first screenplay i wrote and no that's all i have to say no just no <laughs> just no it's a um it's a bit complicated but i mean you know we live in a digital age there's youtube you can teach yourself it's nothing nothing impossible to learn um so yeah i would definitely figure out the formatting because it's very convoluted at times but very very important to a screenplay yeah and i definitely think um if you uh, as well with the formatting if you read a lot of scripts that is also going to help you understand the formatting and you kind of learn as you the more you do it the more you'll learn and once you see like how um the websites will format it for you you'll kind of get the hang of it but definitely reading scripts online i 100 percent because the thing is 
one great thing about um, screenplays is that unlike with novels you can just get any screenplay pretty much of any movie in like the last like a hundred years because most of them are online so even if you wanted to like read the star wars script whatever script you want to read you can just look it up just write whatever it is pdf and normally there'll be a copy online and when you read those it's really really interesting to kind of um learn and see how one it's changed from like being on the page to like the final product and two how the like screenwriter has managed to convey the kind of atmosphere and like the emotions and what the characters are like just through like those sort of sparse words on the page um my recommendation is always reading a script of a movie that you saw and liked and then also so basically like whatever movie you've seen and you like you really liked it and you thought wow that screen play in it must have been amazing read the screenplay of it see like what what do you think that they did well and then also read a script of a movie that you've never seen and here's why because you kind of want to see even if you've never seen that like never watched that film can you like sort of picture it in your head just from the words on the page and if you can that's a well-written screenplay um yeah so that's my recommendations for your first to get started and also just get started just give it a go once you got the formatting down or if you've got a website to do it for you just give it a go i believe in you guys i went a bit donald trump there for a second just give it a go sorry oh my God. <laughs> i don't know why i did that uh- <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. The cat saying, go, guys. I believe in you. Cat saying, believe- I believe in you. I know. I think that's the nicest thing beautiful. you've ever said on this podcast. I know. Yeah. I was about well, to say, <laughs> this is very positive. What are you yeah. I feel I very know. positive it's... about this, huh? Yeah, I just want everyone to try it. Um, but, I love yeah. that. No, go. I love this. I love this for you. I love this new positive attitude. It's it, mm-hmm. it's really great. It won't last. It's just a <laughs> Just a <laughs> <episode. laughs> It'll be back okay. to being me. We'll be back to our usual programming next yeah. episode. Um, but what are some m- common misconceptions that you guys think people have about screenwriting? Because I know that from my perspective, it just seems really hard. <laughs> That's like my main conception. That could be, I think that might be a correct one, just from what I've seen. But just what are some misconceptions you guys think people get? Uh, Probably that it's easier than novel writing. Um, While they are very similar, they're also very, very different. And in screenplays, when they don't have things that novels have, they have things that only screenplays have, like the formatting. And um, rather than it being easier than writing a novel, it's just like a completely different skill. And you can't really tell the audience's stuff as easily. Like with a novel... If you want to say, I don't, I don't know, if you want to say that, like, the main character is thinking something, you can literally just write what they're thinking. But in a screenplay, you have to find a way to show the audience that they're thinking this thing without directly saying, I'm thinking I want tacos for lunch, you know? (laughs) Like, you have to find ways around things that you can't get from a screenplay that would normally be in a novel. And, um... It's a very visual thing, so you have to be able to convey it visually with words on a page. Which doesn't sound like it would work. <laughs> like, it, it doesn't seem like that's how it should work, but it does. Um, and it's definitely not easier than novel writing. I wouldn't say that it's hard, though. I think if you can figure out the formatting and sort of get a hang of how screenplays connect with an audience and how they're different than a novel, I think it can be easy, maybe even easier, once you have the formatting, because again, formatting is my worst enemy. Um, <laughs> but it's definitely a different skill, and it can bring things to your novels that you otherwise wouldn't have, so, yeah. 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 Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> um, yeah, also talking about like it being easier, some people think that because there's like for example there's so many tv shows there's so many movies and also they think it would be less competitive they think it's easier to become a professional screenwriter than a professional author no 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 no. both are very difficult for different reasons obviously with a novel it's kind of like you might spend years and years on one project and then you pitch it like you're trying to get it to um, be taken up by like a literary agent and then you're trying to get it published but that's very di- it's a very different path basically to what a screenwriter does because the truth is with screenwriting and I don't want to break anyone's little hearts here but it is incredibly unlikely that your first script will be produced into a movie. I know. I know it hurts. 
Just take a deep <laughs> breath. <laughs> but the thing is, at the end of the day, you don't just have like with, again with a novel, it's finished product. But with a screenplay, it's not just even if it's a really really well written screenplay, you still have to get a producer to decide to give you money. You have to get a director to get on board. You have to get a bunch of actors to be able to do this, and all of this has to kind of come together to be able to make your final product. Uh, instead of actually being able to use that first script as your movie, you'll probably more likely use it as part of like your portfolio when applying for other screenwriting jobs. A lot of screenwriters kind of like, you know, like the Drake's on, they started from the bottom, now they're here. So they like start like doing small jobs on like other TV shows and like doing small screenwriting before getting to do bigger and bigger projects and then getting to write whatever they want. So that's kind of one of the big differences is that you're not likely to just be able to follow your own path. You kind of have to work your way up in different different ways than it is with like novel writing and the other thing is that this is more of a misconception around beginner screen writers that screenplays include screen directions and so what i mean by screen direction is for example um for for those who don't know so things like jump cuts and like um cut to and stuff like that so the things that you're telling the director to do with a camera you most of the time you're not going to write that in the script because that comes like later when the, you're kind of working with the director and stuff like that and if you put that into your first script some directors will be like i don't like you telling me what to do so um it's best for you not to do that in your like spec script which which what we said earlier is the one that you pitch to studios and stuff like that so generally don't include screen directions unless it's really really important just include dialogue action scene setting so yeah that's one of the misconceptions that a lot of beginner screenwriters make because i see sometimes like their first script is just like filled with screen directions and it's like okay you're just gonna i know how that's, <laughs> i know you're just gonna have to take it all away <laughs> like uh, yeah and yeah and then like, basically finally that books are better than movies and tv shows they're different oh. per- they have different purposes and they're different forms of entertainment and both are valid and yeah yes <laughs> yeah. Anyways, yeah. yeah no i find that so interesting the idea of like the transitions because i guess just from what i'm gathering i mean in both novel writing and screenplay writing it seems like to a certain extent you have to surrender creative control in a lot of areas but I think it's, it seems a little more extreme in screenplays just because when when you're writing a novel for the most part it's just you and then eventually if you get it published there'll be agent editors publishing houses telling you what to do but it seems in a screenplay it's very much like you give them the groundwork and then they go with it however they want <laughs> which is so interesting to me yeah um but people, I also people wanna... think that's sad sorry i was gonna just say some mean? people get like get like oh that must mean it's like sad like sadder but i'm like it's kind of more be- it's kind of beautiful in a different way because yeah. one thing you don't have to worry about certain things like you you can just be like someone else will figure that out later <laughs> and it's just kind of nice to think about you're working on this huge project with other people and you're getting like their creative input as well so yeah i just want yeah. to say that because i hate it when people like mm-hmm get down on screenwriting because of that i'm like no it's just a different thing it's just a different <laughs> art form it's like, a team yeah. effort <laughs> it's team effort. Effort. <laughs> there is no art team <laughs> yeah. no, anyway sorry that. i interrupted you carry on, carry on. <laughs> um i also want to ask so what are some other top tips that you think people should know before they write their first screenplay oh my god i forgot what i was gonna say <laughs> Um, so we've been talking kind of this whole time about how they're a collaborative effort and it's teamwork and it's not just you, but one of the things with that is that you have to be a lot quicker with screenplays because obviously we've said that they're shorter than novels and all that stuff, but the thing is, because you have to be shorter, you A, don't really have time to, let's say, flesh out a character, like, really in depth or describe, like, a scene really in depth, so... Because you have to be quicker, you have to sort of sacrifice a lot of those things. Not only because you have to be quicker, but also because it's a collaborative effort, again. Um, you know, like, the actors in the future are all going to interpret their own characters very differently. Um, so, you know, you might want to write this character as jumpy and such, and a, an actor might take it in a completely different direction. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just means it's going to be a different character than you originally intended it. Um, so... Don't be so specific. Don't go on like an entire page long rant about what this character is doing or what the the background of this scene looks like. Like, don't do that. You're wasting time. 
and that's not necessarily your choice. You have to give up a lot of creative control, like you said, Ruby, um, in screenplays. And maybe if you're a bit of a control freak like me, that's not a good thing, but <laughs> otherwise, it's it's good with screenplays to leave some things up to the imagination. Um, because all of that stuff, all of that specific stuff and the visuals and blah 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 are all going to be up to the producer, the director, the set designers, the costume designers, and all those people. So, it's whereas with novels, you want to be specific, screenplays, you don't. You have to give that up to the people in the future. Yeah, it's yeah. my little rant. <laughs> yeah, um, definitely. I think, um, yeah, you have to be a lot um, quicker. Um, you know, brevity is the soul of wit, and brevity is what keeps screenplays alive, basically, because when, when you think about it, a director and an actor, they're going to be using that you know, to shoot the, she- the shoot the scene, they don't need to read five pages of you talking about how the character's eyes are really, really green. For one thing, because they might hire an actor who's got blue eyes. What are you going to do then? <laughs> so generally, for example, with um, character descriptions, you'll normally do like a little bracket and you'll just say like their age and like maybe like their ethnicity and maybe like one other adjective about them and then that's it. Whereas with like a screen, uh, with a, whereas with a novel, you're going to write like a paragraph describing what they're like and stuff. So that's, a big thing obviously um if you do decide to become a director like director screenwriter like some people do you will have more creative control but you still won't be able to like change people's appearances if an actor is good for a part you're not gonna be able to like just (laughs) change what they look like completely that's not gonna work uh yeah so that's um one of the big things is just brevity keeping it quick and it's really good um way to learn how to be better at like um taking out useless words in your own novels because sometimes novel writers go a bit like waffly like I am right now just talking nonsense (laughs) so um it's a really good trick to like learn how to get all that nonsense out of the way and the last thing I think one of my top tips is that a page in a screenplay if it's formatted correctly should be equal to about a minute of screen time so this is how you can make sure that you're keeping to the time limits of whatever medium you choose because like if you write a 300 page screenplay no one's gonna watch like a film that's so long it's like three hours so uh yeah d- i mean apart from endgame okay no i was just gonna say that shut up about that, that. Shut up about that. i will i will not hear only the mcu that. could <laughs> only, only the mcu could. could do it like, honest, i feel like they probably have quite short screenplays because some of it will just be like i know fight scene like that happens, happens. Of, yeah. um thank you guys for those tips those are actually really helpful um what i'm gathering <laughs> which I kind of already knew this, but in screenplays, I feel like you have to be a lot more intentional with every single word that you use. Oh, yeah. And in novel writing, you're allowed to blab however much you want, and you can cut it out or whatever. But I think a major issue, like, especially in the novel community lately, is so many people are overwriting. Like, I had the amount of books, like, published, well-read, like, books that I've read that were, like, 150,000 words and could have been told in 100,000 words. It's so many. So I think that that's, that's um, a really good skill that screenplays can help you g- gain is just learning that you have to be intentional with every single word. And I know that's something I try and do my own writing, but I'm sure if I try out screenplays, I will, I will learn it even more. Um, but I wanted to ask, do either of you have any recommendations for screenplays that you've read that you think could be helpful for somebody who maybe wants to get started in um, writing screenplays or even just somebody who's like curious and would enjoy like reading the script? Um, I recently read uh, The Hate You Give script and Five Feet Apart. They're actually both books. The books are amazing. And we will be talking about book adaptations soon, <laughs> soon, very soon. I'm saving the ranch for later. Uh, but they're really, really good, really good screenplays in general. And like I said, they're both adaptations, but they're also very well written screenplays. And um, they they did a really good job at the ap- adaptation, which is no small feat. I, yeah. 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 I, um, <laughs> yeah, I also loved it. Uh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I'm being mean. I'm sorry. I'm like, okay. Anyways, what I was gonna say is, I agree though. The Hate You Give is a very well written, um, like screenplay. Um, one that I read when I was first starting out is The Social Network by Aaron Sorkin. If you ever want to learn how to write good dialogue, Aaron Sorkin, his dialogue, oh, it's a chef's mm-hmm. masterpiece because it's very rhythmic. It's very like 
like it's it's basically kind of almost Shakespearean in the kind of like rhythm. I love bringing up Shakespeare. I don't know what is up with me today. I'm just <laughs> bringing up like, all the time at the moment. Uh, yeah. Anyways, <laughs> it's very like rhythmic and um, that kind of thing. It's 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 really really interesting. Um, if you want to write sort of non realistic dialogue, um, other ones. Uh, I really liked um the Community pilot, um, script. That was quite a nice one I liked um, reading. And also um, Parasite, when it was translated into English, um, like the English like translation of the Korean screenplay. Parasite is one well-written film. Oh, yeah. Even if you don't want to read the script, watch Parasite. It is like, I know it got all the hype in the Oscars. I know I'm not the first person to say this, <laughs> but you know what? I'm just agreeing with them. I'm just Controversial saying, yeah, opinion, it is. guys. Parasite's it's really good. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. 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 You know, I'm so edgy. I, I watched this movie called Parasite. So I don't think unique. anyone's heard it. It's like really <laughs> underground. I don't know if you've heard it's of really it. It's really underground. But yeah, definitely that. Um, you'll learn a lot about um, like hidden things and screenplays and things like that. Um, like sneaking, sneaking a little... A little bit of hidden stuff that people aren't gonna find. So yeah, Hidden Parasite. Gems. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Um, so those are the ones yeah. I'd recommend. But also just, um, like I said earlier, find a film that you love and read the screenplay for it, because it it will like open your eyes to how they managed to get that done. Because sometimes you think, oh, they wouldn't have put this in the screenplay, but they did put it in the screenplay, and you never even knew it. And yeah. Yeah, that's, that's my thoughts. Um, BRB, I'm going to find out if the hand flex in Pride and Prejudice was in the screenplay. Because <laughs> I love that. Um, I also love that you talked about the community pilot. Community is a show with such, like, wacky writing, but, like, in the best way possible. Like, it's, like, it feels, like, even when you're watching, you're like, this feels, like, genius, but, like, hilarious. I just, I love yeah. the community. Um, but what is your guys' favorite thing about screenwriting and what do you think is the most challenging thing? I think my favorite thing is how short they are and how condensed they are because I struggle a lot with writing novels because I'm a very fast writer. I love, I love flash fiction. Flash, oh my god, flash fiction is like my favorite thing ever. But because it's just like short and your words are so much more powerful than a novel because with novels, like the story is longer, it's drawn out. And I really love screenplays because it's more condensed and I can get it done faster because I'm impatient. And also because you're so much more exact with it. And it's just such an interesting way to tell a story because it's so short, but it packs such a good punch. and I love it. Um, but probably the most challenging thing, I've said it before and I'll say it again, the formatting. <laughs> We're going to emphasize today formatting is hard. I, You know, I struggle formatting novels, and those are way simpler formatting. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what about you, Kat? Um, yeah, so my favorite thing about screenwriting is just... I, I'm kind of like Ray in that I am impatient, and also I don't like... I want to say, I, I, the controversial opinion, I don't like describing things a lot. Like, I don't, I hate having to, you know when, like, people walk into a room, I'm tired of describing rooms, man, they look like a room. Yeah. What more do you want me to say? It looks <laughs> like a room, yeah. So that's um, something that I love about screenplays, is that dialogue is, like, the main driving force of a mm-hmm. screenplay, whereas with novels, it can be dialogue, but it's also a lot of prose. And I do like writing prose, but um, descriptions just kill me. I'm so tired of it. I, I yeah. don't know how many different ways you can describe a forest. It, it looks like a forest. <laughs> There's trees. What more do you want? You know, that's, that's the kind of thing that uh, kind of bores me. So getting to just write, like, dialogue and stuff like that is really mm-hmm. fun. But the most challenging thing for me... I've gotten over the formatting thing. I'm over it now. But um, the thing for me that's the most challenging is with novels, you can tell the audience a lot more. Because, for example, you can even just say, like, and um, if you want to, like, skip to a next bit, you can say, like, oh, they had a conversation where, like, um, someone told them that someone was murdered, basically. And you could just, like, write that in one sentence or something. But with um, a screenplay, you have to be able to deliver information to the audience without feeling like you're spoon feeding it. So you can tell the difference between good exposition in a screenplay and bad exposition. Because bad exposition will be like, hey, brother, do you remember that time my mother got murdered? (laughs) It's like, (laughs) that's like so like badly written, right? But it's so easy to kind of fall into that trap with screenplays because you want to be able to tell the audience that this character 
is like related to this character but it's a lot harder to do because you know there's not there's not an easy way to just write in one line like this is my brother and like you can do in a novel but in a screenplay you have to kind of show that they're brothers without saying because nobody says it no one goes like hey bro like that's not that's not yes. a thing yet the so infamous, I like hey bro get... hey sis what you doing <laughs> hey, sis oh my yeah gosh. so like that yeah. in screenwriting it's it that's definitely the most difficult thing it's finding a way to tell the audience information without like making it really obvious you're trying to tell them the information so yeah that's my yeah yeah no i love that you don't like describing things because i hate describing things <laughs> oh my gosh um every time i've ever gotten a book baited the the betas are always like ruby you did not describe a single thing about the setting you didn't even describe like where they're standing and i was like oh it, it takes me like so much in revisions i have to like go back and I, i'm i'm a big sufferer of white room syndrome i guess in my writing but you know i don't care I don't care. I actually do care. I should. This podcast that. is description haters only. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're anti. Never read them in books. Do you guys actually oh, no, read? Because I, I never do. Yeah. I skip it. My I just. Like, I'm just like, oh, description. I skip Let's it. Let's go down. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I don't the care. The second they say there's a room, they say there's a room, and my eyes no. are going, where's the next dialogue? Yeah. Section? I'm no. tired. I am and tired. Even, okay. And even like the descriptions will be so beautiful and so well written, and and I just I just don't appreciate them. I'm like, I don't care. I know. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I'm yeah. just. I, I can't. I can't deal with it. Because like, sorry, any description tell me where lovers. It is. Like, sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're not, I'm sorry to all the script lovers. I'm oh, just. Sorry. <laughs> We'll make it up to you guys. We'll get someone who actually does like writing description. Yeah. But yeah. We'll, we'll find somebody to come tell us how much it actually is important that we have descriptions. Yeah. Um, okay, so this kind of piggybacks off the last question, and you might just be reiterating for this one, but what do you think is the most challenging difference between screenwriting and the more traditional style of prose? I think for me... I'm not going to say formatting again, don't worry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, it's the lack of inner dialogue in characters because mm -hmm. in prose and novels and whatever you can if you're in first person or even if you're in third actually you can basically have a character go on like this whole inner monologue where you like reveal their thoughts on whatever but with screenwriting you lit you literally can't do that like at all and it's kind of annoying for me because i do love inner monologues i think they're very entertaining um but you can't do it in screenwriting. So it's really hard mm -hmm. to convey a character's thought to an audience without just having them sort of say it. Because the only way that you can really have that be revealed through dialogue, and that makes it so much harder because then you have to think, okay, well, who is this character talking about whatever it is that they're talking about to? Who are they talking to? Like, where are they? It's a whole new way to show an audience a thought or a message and it can be very very difficult so it's really annoying <laughs> yeah i love internal yeah. monologues i don't think i could let go of that i know right i'm sorry but <laughs> yeah i i definitely agree internal monologues are the most like challenging difference especially because i love using them to establish like character voice and stuff yep. but something that is quite nice about not having an internal monologue is that Sometimes in books, it's kind of hard to foreshadow things without making them seem really, really obvious to the readers. Because obviously, you have to write it down purposely, like, there is a knife there, <laughs> or whatever, you know. And like, obviously, good writers and stuff can do it easily. But in a screenplay, you can, you can, it's a lot easier to hide these things because you don't have the internal monologue. So you could have a main character who is evil the whole time. And they, the audience will never know because it's not in their head. They're just watching like from afar. And there's this thing called like um, Sheko Shekov's Shekov's gun. Well, I think that's how you say it. Where it's basically if there's a gun, there ha it has to be in. If there's like a gun in the first scene, it has to be shot somewhere. Like someone has to get shot basically in the in the film, whatever, right? And what you can do in a screenplay is you can just kind of like do an establishing shot, and you can have like a little thing of showing the gun, but you don't have to like linger on it, and you kind of. It's those little hints. Have you ever seen like these little Easter egg videos on like YouTube mm. where it's like twenty Easter eggs you missed? Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot harder to do that in a book than it is in a movie. So that is my mm. um. So even though yeah, there's a really challenging difference, but that that's one thing that I definitely think, even though it is challenging, it can be rewarding. There's benefits. There's yeah. downsides. That's life. 
Um, Tell them. Gosh, so you're so positive today. I know so it's positive. weird. What is I happening? Like <laughs> Why are you not being mean to me? <laughs> Be mean to me. <laughs> Make us feel bad. Um, no, <laughs> no but I think I think that's such like a good point. I mean, I can think of the amount. I feel like the amount of plot twists I haven't guessed in movies is far lower than the amount of plot twists I've guessed in books. Like, cause plot twists in movies, it's you're less likely to pick up on the details, cause like they'll distract you with something else, but you can't mm-hmm. easily do that in a book. I, I always like see like they, they like point out something and I'm like, oh, that's gonna come up later. That's a part. Yeah. Of it. <laughs> Especially like uh, like I wrote um I've been working on a murder mystery and oh my gosh, it is so hard to like foreshadow and not make it completely obvious yeah. like what the plot twist mm-hmm. is gonna be it's so hard it's so difficult but you don't want to like completely take them off by like off guard because you want them to like be like oh i missed that like i missed that all that time ago because they think that's more entertaining but i mean that's also just my opinion uh <laughs> but for the long-awaited question what do you guys think about book adaptations i know ray has <laughs> a rant prepared <laughs> okay <laughs> <Okay>, go <laughs> I'm so you don't understand. I was up at like literally like 12 a.m. last night on my computer putting this in the script because I'm so excited to talk about it. So, so book adaptations. It's when a book goes from being a book to being a movie or a TV show or something, whatever. But the thing is, they're very different forms of art. Like we've already discussed, however many times I don't even know. Um. But the key thing is that they're adaptations. And because of that, it's not going to be a carbon copy of the book. Like, we've we've said how, like, you have to get rid of inner monologues and replace it with, like, dialogues or something. And in a lot of books, inner monologues... Oh, my God. (laughs) Inner (laughs) monologues can be very, very important to the plot and a character or whatever. So when that's missing in the film... And you don't properly replace it with something that's just as important. A lot of people get really upset with that. Because it's not a carbon copy of the book. It's literally called an adaptation. Because it has to adapt to fit the format of a screen. So, (laughs) Um, I mean, of course, adaptations that are, like, super way off are, like, a very different story. I'm I'm looking at you, Percy Jackson films, okay? No. No, I'm calling you out, okay? It was horrendous, but... (laughs) But the point is that they're very different art forms, and it's really, really difficult to get a book to be a movie and do it so that it's still enjoyable. <laughs> um, and a little, a little, they're they're different art forms, but they're beautiful in their own way. And I think if we and the movies too closely, away from their individual. And that's it. Thank you for listening to my TED. I appreciate it. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Maybe so better. Applause. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, that's so beautiful. Um, yeah, I definitely agree. You can't. And the thing is, yes, there are bad book ad- adaptations, but also sometimes, like changing things in a book is what's going to uh, changing things from the book is what's actually going to make the movie a lot better because mm-hmm. there's certain things that just don't translate well onto screen. Um, one example I can think of is the Princess Bride book and the Princess Bride movie have slightly different genres. So the Princess Bride book is pretty much a straight kind of satire there's there's certain elements of like seriousness in it but not as much as the movie whereas the movie is like kind of a comedy but it also has like that dramatic action romance aspect to it which the book didn't have as much of but it works because for a movie you kind of need um for one thing you need sort of a broader appeal than you do with a book because a book can be very very niche whereas a movie you know families are going to go there with their like kids you kind of want more people to be able to enjoy it and stuff like that and also in terms of like in a monologue and stuff like that sometimes people forget that like you can use certain things that films have that um, books don't because you can't put a playlist in a book can you you can't add music Mm -hmm. to a book can you so if you have you can add like music you can use direction and things like that and one here's my controversial opinion there is one movie adaptation that i think was actually better than the book and yeah i know i know 
I know. Um, Spit it out. Yeah. Um, It's, you know, to all the boys I loved before, I read the book Mm -hmm. and I watched the movie. And the movie, the first movie, I'm not going to talk about the sequels because the sequels aren't as good. But the first movie was actually a lot better than the book because of the sort of framing and the directing and things like that. So at the end of the day, Yes, some book act- act- adaptations suck. They really do. But sometimes you also can't get hung up on like small details that have to be changed from books to movies and things. And you have to appreciate them in their different kind of art forms because they're different at the end of the day. Certain things just aren't going to translate well onto the screen, especially for people who haven't read the books. You kind of have to just understand that. Let it go, man. Just let it go. It'll all be chill. I, yeah. I have another example to add. <laughs> um, in uh, I know I mentioned before that The Hate You Give is both a really good book and a really good movie. I highly recommend you read the screenplay and the book and watch the movie because it's so good. Um, but one of the things that I really loved about the movie is it wasn't a carbon copy of the book, but it was still translated so well. Like it blows my mind every time I I watch it because it's just so amazing. Like I'm I'm not gonna spoil too much, but um, there was one character, Haley, and she was kind of, like, in this little conflict thing with the main character, Star. Again, I'm trying not to spoil anything, even though I really do. Um, but instead of having the original scene that they had in the book, they replaced it with something else. And the something else is so confrontational without the inner monologue, but it works so well. And, um, how do I say this without spoiling it? Oh, this is so hard! Um, and then there was one scene where the main character is obviously, like, struggling a lot, and she's in the car, and instead of, like, going on in this inner monologue, like, the, like, she did in the book, they have, in the screenplay, she basically, like, beats the, like, the dashboard of the car, like, and, like, screams, and, like, it's all this stuff, and it's just, it's really expressive, and it's really, really good, instead of just words, and I think if you can do that in a book adaptation, you have one. I bow to you. That is- Yeah you're great <laughs> yeah great, great job yeah it's yeah. it's more important to capture the spirit of a book than oh, to yeah. capture the details mm. i think mm-hmm. as long as you have like the spirit of the characters right then it doesn't really the small details don't really matter as long as yeah they're, yeah mm-hmm. that's my feeling oh, mm-hmm. i love that mm-hmm. well that's all of my questions um is there anything else you guys want to add I just really suggest that you at least try it because it can really improve your writing. Um, and a little, a little personal example for me, I think for me, writing screenplays has really helped me see like the bigger picture in my writing because with screenplays, you know, there's so much more that you have to consider all at once that it sort of like expands your attention to detail. Um, and if you look at like my novel writing before and after trying out, you can, it's, it's so obvious that I, like, I really improved with writing settings and atmosphere because those are really important in movies. And I, like, basically didn't write a single thing about them in novels. But it, after I tried screenwriting, it really, really helped me understand, like, just how important, like, little details and, like, settings and stuff like that can be. And it also really helped me with descriptions, like we said before, because we all hate descriptions here. But, um... So yeah, you should you should really just give it a try because it's a different skill and that skill can translate in a really nice way over to your novel, whatever other right you write. I don't know, but try it. Just try. It. Yeah, I agree. Just try it. That's my my takeaway from this. Um, uh, I when I started writing screenplays the same, it just improved my act, other writing as well. It's a lot of fun as well. I think mm-hmm. um, even if you like never plan on becoming a screenwriter screenwriting can be a really great way to kind of de-stress from writing novels I think um and the other way around I like to just switch it up because sometimes writing screenplay stresses me out so I go back to writing a novel and sometimes writing novels stress me out so I go back to writing a screenplay (laughs) so I just say try it it'll be even if you end up hating it which I you know highly doubt because who would? No, um, even if you do end up hating it, it's just, it's a good thing to try um, because it will teach you a lot about um, using intention in your words and not just gobbly gobbly goo goo doo 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 Yeah, which is, yeah. <laughs> gobbly gobbly goo doo goo doo doo You sound like a so, turkey. <laughs> I am a turkey. Gobbly gobbly. 
Yeah. So yeah, just try it. Yeah. Um, if you hate it, um, send me a message and say that I ruined your life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, that's my that's takeaway. I love the gobbly gobbly gibbly gibbly. I think that's gibbly, our summary gibbly. for today's episode. It was a really good, really good summary. Um, but if you do decide to write a screenplay, we will be posting on our Instagram a question box where you can send us a one sentence pitch for your screenplay. We're very excited to see what you guys come up with. Um, we'll see if I end up writing a screenplay. You know, I feel like I should try it. You guys have convinced me. Do it. Do it. Oh, 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 okay. 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 Um, Ray is gonna talk to you. I I will come find (laughs) you. Like a little chihuahua. (laughs) (laughs) I just got compared to a chihuahua. I don't know Well, you kind of went, damn it, It just got a little (laughs) chihuahua vibes. I'm sorry. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, well, you're a golden retriever, so... Really okay, deal. We're all dogs. <laughs> um, excuse no, you. No, cat. Cat is a cat. Cat is I, cat's name yeah, is literally I'm cat. Literally a cat. I'm okay, literally yeah, sure. a cat. Cat's a cat, <laughs> and then me and Ray are dogs. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Before we get distracted talking about what animals we are, um, shall we wrap up for today, guys? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's all from us today, Red and Cadets. Before we keep talking about dogs, and I would like to say thank you for indulging me on this. And we will see you on our next adventure. Woo! Yes, we will. We will see you. We them. finished. We'll be right <laughs> about the morning. Thank you for listening to the Moving Right Along podcast made possible by the Young Writers Initiative. Make sure to leave us a rating and review on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram at Moving Right Along Podcast or find us on tywi.org. And while you're on the website, why not check out our Discord server, The Writer's Town? Thank you to our amazing team without whom this wouldn't be possible. Our producer, Simone, co-producer, Jasmine, and social media manager, Cassette. All music is by Kevin McLeod at filmmusic.io. Today you heard Beauty Flow, and all sound effects are from the Free Sound Project.